Okay, we're back live here at HP Discover 2012. Mm -hmm. This is SiliconAngle.tv, the Cube, our flagship telecast. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconAngle.com. I'm joined with my co-host. I'm Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org, and we're here with Cube alum, Scott Weller, who's the VP and General Manager of the HP Technology Services Group. Scott, welcome back to the Cube. Thank you. Good Thank to see you again. HP Discover, it's a big show. Last time we saw you, we had you on the Cube. We had a you know, nice little mm -hmm. intimate event, mm -hmm. and uh, now it's exploded, you know, 10,000 plus customers here, right. and yeah. uh, of course we're in Vegas. Yeah, of <laughs> you know, course. Where else would you have that many people? Right. So, well, anyway, welcome back. What's, you. Uh, how you feeling? What's happening at Discover? Really good. I mean, this is, uh, the energy here is unbelievable. We have, uh, I think we've set a record for uh, an HP event, and, uh, and of course it's all in the context of a lot of new services and technology. Um, it's just great. It's uh, the the buzz on this from our customers is just uh, really overwhelming. So you guys announced a couple months ago Converge Cloud. We were talking mm -hmm. off air. Meg announced it in Boston. Um, so talk about the HP's cloud strategy and what mm -hmm. that means for your services and what new services you guys are are bringing to yeah. market as a result of all this. So. Um, Converge Cloud really, and I'm sure you've heard this from other guests, is that uh, is a is really a blueprint, an IT blueprint uh, for infrastructure that's uh, that's agile but also reliable, uh, that's that's built on choice, and that has really interesting and uh, flexible economics. So that's that's uh, what we've uh, enabled through all these announcements. Now on the service side, if you think about what all of that choice means, uh, it, it means that uh, the customers. The good news is they have uh, a lot of uh, capability and flexibility in how they source their IT. We, we imagine that over time CIOs become uh, service brokers, but it also means that now they're, they're going to have to deal with the complexities of making those choices and maintaining them, governing, and so on. And so what we're here to do is, is try to make that all seamless and, and a lot simpler for our customers. And uh, we do that through this service that we call Data Center Care. And, uh, and there were some other uh, services that we announced this week that are related, but that's our core new service. So talk about data center care. What, what, is, what is it all about and how is it different? How is it, you know, cloudized? Right, right. So I, I think it was with you guys a couple of months ago that we sort of previewed it, but we really couldn't tell the whole story because we hadn't announced Converge Cloud. So now that we've done that, it all comes together. So data, data center care is really, starts with an enterprise uh, wide service arrangement that's tailored for the data center. And the tailoring includes everything from uh, reactive, proactive, on-site, and uh, advisory services that are that are pulled together uh, depending on the customer's data center environment. Uh, we uh, integrate different service blocks and so on to create a, a, a very tailored, specific service, and uh, and it covers everything again from from traditional uh, IT all the way through hyperscale and and cloud. So when you think about cloud, you think about simplicity, ease of use, swipe the yep. credit card, all those right. wonderful yep. attributes, and it's great from a c uh, customer perspective. Mm -hmm. The back end is complex. Right. Uh, arguably, or maybe it's not arguable, even more complex. So mm -hmm. that puts more tension on IT, it changes somewhat the role of, of IT, yep. and it ripples through to services. What, what are you seeing there, and what's, what's changing because of cloud? Yeah, again, um, you know, the CIOs want to be able to, to deliver services to the business. And they want to be able to do that um, in a very different way. And agility is really the key, key word here because, uh, you know, historically, if a business said we want to do a particular thing, it could take weeks, months uh, to provision the IT to enable that. And then you, you had to live with whatever the economic model was. Now, they want it provisioned in minutes. They want to be able to decide it runs here or outside or in some other place. They want that to be almost real time. And so, uh, and that's the environment we're in right now with business models changing and people, frankly, inventing new business models every day. So we might have talked, in fact, you might have been the guest I said this to, but um, we, we see everything as a service. Right, um, yeah. You know, platform as a service, software as a service, on and on and on and on. Mm -hmm. um, how about this notion of Service as a service. People are people asking you to consume yeah. services in an on-demand way and being yeah. able to dial up and dial down. And is that a is that a reasonable request? Well, that's uh, it, it, that to me is the role description of the CIO to make services a service. That is their job going forward, and uh, and we're here to enable that. You know, someone asked me the other day. So I guess you're going to be a a broker. I said no. Actually, we're in the business of of helping other people be brokers. 
Yeah, because the, that's, that's sort of, I touched on that before, but the yeah. role of IT change in becoming right. more of a cloud broker. Yes. You're not the broker, you're Correct. enabling the broker. That's right. Um, but it's also changing the way in which they consume hardware, software, mm -hmm. and services, or no? Yeah, it, it absolutely is, and in fact, it, the, the line where, uh, you know, the, the concern line, I would say, where the CIO wants to worry about certain aspects of, of IT is just changing. So, it, you know, it used to be down at the hardware level, now it's, it's, it's way up into the application level, and, and really it's about where do those apps live, how do I enable them, how do I do all that very dynamically, and also how do I uh, use the flexible and, and economics of, uh, of cloud. And so, so really, it's, it's where, do, where do CIOs pay attention, where do they put their time and effort, is really changing, and we're trying to abstract all the rest of it away for them and make it seamless and simple. What's happening on the support side? Um, can you mm. talk about that a little bit? Sure, yeah. Well, support has just changed, right? Support used to be break, fix on hardware. Now support means I got to take the call no matter what the issue is. It could be, it could be an HP issue. It could be a third-party software issue. It could be open source issue. It could be an issue with one of the cloud bursting partners, Amazon or, or HP's cloud. The customer doesn't have the time to really understand or figure out where the issues are coming from. They want somebody to call, somebody to resolve it for them, and so we're having to get more involved in all these aspects. Create actually an ecosystem around HP of back-to-back -back service arrangements so that we can abstract away all the complexity and make it simple and seamless. So we did a survey recently, Scott, in the Wikibon community, we asked what, what initiatives are mm -hmm. going to require outside help in 2012, right. and you can see right. cloud strategy, cloud deployment, and cloud yep. management were three of the top five. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and you touch at least two of those three. Mm -hmm. Are you seeing that in the base, um, that these are the top things that people are looking for outside services? In, or, right. and, so, and are we missing any, what else is you know, bubbling up there? No, I, th I think that's a reasonable representation. You know, I think we're well past now uh, the point where people are, aren't sure about the cloud, like is it real? I think mm -hmm. we're all convinced it's real. Uh, but the problem is, is uh, while the customers get it, they're not sure how to do it. They need help to, uh, to uh, first of all, get on the journey and then build once they're ready to build and understand what a future state looks like. And that was really the other service that we announced this week, which was Converge Cloud uh, Planning Services, which includes all of that, everything from what's the cloud promise, what's the implication to uh, governance and applications, architecture and so on, all the way down through gap analysis, future state, and, uh, and business case development. So that's, that's really the beginning of, of how we work with customers. But frankly, you know, in, in the context of data center care, uh, that's, a, that's a sort of a running arrangement and at any point the customer can say to us, okay, we're ready to learn, we're ready to move, ready to migrate. Uh, we had uh, Kim Peterson on from Intel. CIO, she gave a keynote. She came on theCUBE this morning, we were talking about a lot of things, big data. Uh, yeah. But around IT in particular, we asked her about you know, the cloud, are you eating your own dog food? You know, what's yeah. leading edge? And, and she yeah. said that the cloud um, for her meant uh, for CIOs that the speed of business and the slowness of IT right. is, a is a mismatch. And that's kind of, a, you know, we all know that. Yeah. Um, business is moving fast with real-time analytics, big data now, big theme here. Mm -hmm. um, cloud you can provision up much faster. So that's going to be a real gateway opportunity for IT to speed up their game. Right. Um, can you talk about that? Because you're dealing with a lot of the IT organizations that are yeah. you know, really trying to, one, get their act together and get faster uh, but it's hard, it's a hard problem. Talk about that dynamic of speeding, speeding up IT. Yeah, so I think that's, that's uh, the best sort of characterization of the state of things right now. You know, uh, if you think about traditional IT, it's, it's not only static, but it's siloed. So if you want to talk about pools of resources that can be provisioned on demand against a business problem, you know, th that just really doesn't exist before cloud. And then, uh, to realize the, the full potential of cloud, you've got to start thinking about your applications differently. So you've got whole industries that need to migrate. Now the good news is certain verticals are there, they're moving faster, um, depending on the vertical. And of course, uh, anything that's new in a business can be provisioned that way. And I see a lot of small companies just saying, you know, I would, why would I do it any other way? So, so it really is about matching the, the sort of the impedance match of business and IT needs to come together. Excellent, so um, we're here, we're live at HP Discover. We're here with Scott Weller, who's the Vice President and General Manager of the HP Technology Services Group. Um, HP's gone through quite a transformation, the service is a big part of that, that transformation. Maybe you could talk a little bit about you know, the business and how it's evolved in the last couple of years. Yeah, so um, 
I would say, you know, the if I if I think about my business particularly, we've got a very large uh, uh, base of, of people and a lot of technology and processes. And what we're finding is, is that with all of this complexity that we're trying to take on, we're having to train and retrain and actually bring up everybody's game. So from a people, from a human capital standpoint, a lot of investment in getting people able to be that single point of contact. You know, it used to be you could call and say, I've got a problem with my hard drive. Now you call in and say, I've got a problem. I need you to figure out where it is. So it's a different kind of skill set. And then Call the Tinker Twins. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> If I could have them on the phone all the time, it'd be <laughs> awesome. But uh, And then of course the processes around that, the technology and so on is evolving so we can go, go a lot faster than we have in the past. And so it's really key to be uh, deep and also fast in the way we respond. And, and so that's really driving a lot of change in our business. So that's interesting. That's sort of what you're doing with your, the human capital within right. HP. Yep. What are you seeing with, with in your customer base? Um, we've talked before about IT transforming to become cloud brokers. Mm -hmm. um, Maybe cloud architects, yeah. you know, maybe maybe not. Maybe they're relying on you for some of that. Mm -hmm. But there's got to be some notion of architect on many of your customer side. Mm -hmm. And then this whole thing of big data, you know, and the lack of data scientists. Are you seeing the customers um, focus on that HR element uh, as you have? Are they a little bit behind, or are they really aggressive and proactive about it? So I, it, <coughs> I would say in the past uh, there was a lot of uh, pressure to slim down IT departments having to do really mm -hmm. on the cost side. Now it's more about focusing on hiring data scientists versus having a lot of IT people. So it's really a different choice point in the way people hire. And that's why, again, the, taking on all this new complexity is not interesting to customers. They want to invest other ways, and, uh, and so far we've been able to show them how they can do that. You know, we've talked a lot in the past you know, 10 years about you know, the core competencies mm -hmm. and focusing on your main business, and, yeah. and unfortunately, because of all that complexity, organizations have been dragged into um, having to deal with a lot of stuff that's not their core competency. Right. The cloud mm -hmm. seems to be changing that. When you talk to people mm -hmm. about how they're transforming IT, they're transforming their infrastructure around cloud, and that, yeah. it looks like finally, we're going to be <laughs> able to allow organizations to get rid of some of that you know, mundane management stuff yeah, um, and yeah. really, you know, tr truly transform and focus on some of the more interesting things. Is that is that pie in the sky by me, or is that no, you're I, finally there? No, I think you've nailed it. And but I think the the, the problem has just changed. Uh, the uh, the attention uh, goes to a different place. It goes to things like governance. How am I going to govern all of this new stuff versus how do I build it? Uh, how do I provision it, and so on. So it's a it actually raises up the game, it raises up the questions uh, and uh, focus to more of a CIO's attention where, where it really belongs. And don't you think a lot of organizations early on, when, when we use the term cloud, mm -hmm. remember there was a big backlash within IT, people right. didn't want to use the term, mm -hmm. they wanted to call it IT as a service, and that's right. clearly changed, no right. question. Mm -hmm. um, but my feeling is that part of that friction was people were afraid that they were going to become obsolete. Yeah. Uh, but and in a way, that's true. The, tr the traditional role of IT is, is changing. Um, some people have said, well, it's the fi final graveyard, cloud is the final graveyard <laughs> of traditional IT. That doesn't mean there's yeah. not great opportunities in IT. What's your take on all that? So I, I guess I don't see it that way. You know, I, I think, first of all, for any real business, um, there's still going to be a lot of build out of traditional IT. It's just going to be operated and provisioned differently with, with a lot of different skills around it. Um, support will be different as we've talked about. The, the kind of uh, concerns that, that uh, IT professionals will have will change to, 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 I think, to a higher level where it really belongs. And so I think, first of all, if you think about uh, a career path for IT professionals, I, I think it's clearly there and actually more interesting than before. Um, closer to the business concerns. I, I think there's actually a, a long tail, a long future around traditional and, and cloud. Okay, great. Scott, I want to ask you about the uh concept we were tossing around earlier about DevOps. So yeah. the personnel, the labor problem within IT sure. is always going to be there. And it's right. part of the, we were talking about performance management dashboards earlier around the software side and all the benchmarking, all the process stuff. Um, the, the people equation um, is important. So with yeah. development becoming such a focus, the consumerization of IT, app stores, yeah. um, that trend, still kind of out far, too far to, to get to yet for most enterprises. Um, but it does bring up the, the talent, the developer. Mm -hmm. yeah. The role of the developer in the IT yeah. equation, where ops is obviously a focus, and, sure. and uh, 
how do you see that whole DevOps you, equation? You know, you know what's interesting is that uh, there, there was a lot of talk um, outside of certain industries like gaming and so on that uh, really the role of the developer was being diminished by the, the way you could mash up different kind of applications and so on. But actually, if you look at it now, I mean, if you can find somebody who, who's a, an app developer in the, uh, in the context of something like, you know, the Apple App Store, high demand, incredible demand for those people. Companies want to adopt that model as a way to push out IP and content into the workforce. So, again, it's just very interesting how things are turning and, and some of these things that we thought would kind of go away, frankly, are back in force and probably are in the highest demand right now. And so that's going to push the speed because you know the developer market today is iterate, iterate, iterate. Yeah, absolutely. Know. And yeah. uh, but the problem is, is that developers to be successful have to fail. You know, rewrite, right. debug, exactly. and test. Yep. Um, ops yep. guys aren't used to that. So that's when you true. have these conversations on the services side, how do how do they go? Like, how do you approach that? And, I mean, DevOps is great. We want to get there. Yeah. Um, but it's not that easy. Well, you know, the way I think about it is, um, agile development couldn't have come along any sooner. I mean, Agile as a development technique has been in the, in the workplace now for about 10 years, and, uh, and frankly, everyone is looking at that as a way to uh, execute in business. I do a small thing that works, I add to it and, and keep adding to it over time. Every drop has value, every drop actually works. And so, if you think about that in app development, if you think about that in terms of IT development and deployment, that's that to me seems to be the trend across the board. It's infecting literally everything that we do in IT. Well, and the point you were talking about before about opportunities for IT, I mean, mm -hmm. that is really, truly a transformation that is going to drive significant business value. It's going to address a lot of CIO concerns about, about, about cost and efficiency, and right. it's going to create hyper productivity exactly. across the organization. And yep. uh, you know, we had a lot of narrative on theCUBE uh, about big data and its impact on business, mm -hmm. and our feeling is that you know, data is the, is the new currency mm -hmm. of organizations and those that can figure out how to get value out of and monetize big data yeah. are really going to yeah. succeed. I mean, much in the same way as ERP had a big impact on companies yeah. who adopted it early on yeah. and a you know, big impact on productivity. So, mm -hmm. um, I, I agree with you uh, about the opportunities for you know, the future. I think it's, uh, it's bright. I always encourage my kids, get into you know, something you know, data oriented and mm -hmm. you know, learn technology. Even if you don't go into the field, it's going to help you down the road. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Final question for me is, um, in that light, you know, a lot of young people in our audience, what, sure, uh, what advice sure. would you give them, people interested in the technology business? Yeah, so this, is, uh, this industry isn't, hasn't been any cooler than it is today, <laughs> first of all, would be my point, and, then, and I've been around a long time. The other thing I'd say is, uh, business and IT are closer together than ever before. So if, uh, if you're interested in an IT career, you know, learn about business, and, and vice versa. You almost can't separate them anymore. Oh, uh, on that on that thread, big data is a, is a, is a future that everyone yeah, is, is acknowledging, yeah. and even HP in their core messaging, it's all about big data. You yeah. see with Vertica now, autonomy, and yep. it's integrating into all the product sets, and it's still so early, but that's such a game-changing yeah. opportunity for folks, mm -hmm. either in people who career. Um, how do you mm -hmm. see the, the big data conversations when, when you talk to customers? Because we know, we pretty much validated that outside the really super early adopters, yeah. it's still kind of like, what is? how do I deal with big data? What, what's your view on that? Big data is like uh, diamond mining. Diamond mining, you have to dig up a lot of dirt, uh, and the dirt is all this data, and somewhere there's a diamond in there, right? So people who can figure out how to find it, uh, people who can figure out how to drill it and dig it up, this is, this is the, a huge uh, uh, career path that hasn't existed before. Um, it's certainly not in these, these terms, so absolutely, uh, the, the, the role of the data scientist is going to be um, a, a huge one, I think, going forward. Okay. Okay, we're here inside theCUBE. Uh, Scott Weller, uh, General Manager of the Technology Services. Thanks for coming into theCUBE. Services is uh, hot, services angle. Uh, yep. Thanks so much, appreciate it. And had a great event in LA. Uh, all those videos are on YouTube, by the way, youtube.com slash siliconangle, and also siliconangle.tv. Uh, go look for those videos and uh, enjoy the videos. We'll be right back with our next guest here inside theCUBE right after this short break.